Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Auto. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. So we got called out to come take a look at this 2020. This is a Chevrolet Trax. Let's hop inside. We got the key right here. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. All right, so the engine started right up. Sounds pretty good, but I do feel a slight misfire. And if we take a look here, you can see we got a check engine light illuminated on the cluster. That's pretty much what they called us out here for to solve this check engine light. I don't have a whole lot of backstory to this car. They just picked it up from the auction. As you can see, it's been freshly detailed, so it looks pretty clean on the inside. So anyway, we're gonna start by hooking up a scan tool. We're gonna run a full scan and see what codes we got. So today I'm gonna be challenging myself. I decided to go ahead and try out this little OBD2 dongle. This one is made by Innova. It's called the 1000. Like most Bluetooth dongles, it pretty much just pairs up with your phone. These are super affordable, super easy to use. I get a lot of comments on my videos from people about the scan tools that I use on my videos saying that, you know, a lot of times the scan tools that I'm using aren't necessarily the most affordable, especially for the DIY person or somebody that's just trying to work on their own car. Something like this Bluetooth dongle is super affordable. It's way more accessible for most people that, again, aren't doing this professionally. You know, they just wanna work on their own car. They wanna be able to do stuff on their own. They just need something that can pull the data from their car, show it to them, and give them a little bit of advice. These are really designed to be a lot less complicated than most professional level scan tools. Professional scan tools, you know, it takes years to learn how to use them properly. Something like this, anyone with just basic entry level knowledge can use it the other nice thing about these is you can usually pick them up at your local auto parts store so i'm going to go ahead and plug it into the obd2 port ours is located right down here near the driver's side kick panel so we're just going to go ahead and plug this thing right in just like that it's got a little green light the blinks showing you it's powered up now for this, I'm gonna be using my cell phone. What you're gonna to wanna to do is download this Repair Solutions 2 app. Once you have it downloaded and installed, we can go ahead and open it up. As you can see, it's pairing up with the dongle. Make sure you have your Bluetooth on. All right, so now that we're paired up with our dongle, let's go ahead and start by doing an all system scan. So let's go ahead and click on that. Just give it a few seconds to download the vehicle profile. And now we're scanning the modules on the vehicle. As you can see, we've got 25 modules to scan. We're about halfway through. I'm just gonna fast forward through this. All right, so now that we're done scanning, it wants us to input the mileage, which it looks like it already pulled it up. It's saying 85053. And comparing that to the dash over here, that number's pretty accurate. So let's go ahead and hit generate report. All right, so here's our report. It's telling us that we have four engine codes found. And in total, we have about 26 codes, which are from all the modules combined. It also lets us know that we're not ready for emissions test. Of course, because we have a check engine light. This is pretty cool right here. It tells us our engine oil life, our oil level, battery status, transmission fluid temperature. It's even got our tire pressure showing us that we got a low tire here on the right rear. And if we keep scrolling down, we got some more stuff here. Looks like we got maintenance items, predicted repairs, TSBs and recalls. We got vehicle warranty information, a cost to own calculator, a vehicle history report. So that's pretty cool. You know, I didn't think that this would come with such an inexpensive tool. I really like that they give you access to TSBs and recalls. So anyway, moving back to our focus, we're gonna go ahead and look at our fault codes. So starting up here at the top, we have codes that have possible fixes. We're gonna skip that for now. We're gonna go down here the powertrain ecm code you can see we got two codes let's go ahead and click on it so the two codes that we have are going to be a p1101 which is the intake airflow system performance and a po300 engine misfire detected now that misfire code makes sense because i can definitely feel it it's not telling us which cylinder is misfiring it's just telling us that there is a misfire it could be in any of the cylinders so we might have to do some digging to find out now as far as the p1101 i wouldn't dig too much into this code especially when we have a misfire simply because whenever you have a misfire of course you're going to have issues with the air intake calibration being off when the engine has a misfire it's running rough and it's barely staying alive oftentimes you can get codes that are related to the fuel trims or intake air system simply because it's running so poorly now they do give you the option to erase the codes that's not what we're here to do we're here to solve this problem now while we're at it we can take a look at these body codes it looks like we got 20 of them we got 18 in the bcm one in the instrument cluster one in the passenger presence module we got a few codes in the chassis looks like the chassis control module the ebcm or electronic brake control module and the power steering control module while this is nice to have the information and the ability to scan all of the codes on the vehicle our concern today really is just with the check engine light we need to focus on solving this issue with the misfire so i think the first thing that we need to do is solve the question what cylinder is it that's misfiring now they do give us some live data here we can go ahead and try to take a look at that 
And we're gonna scroll through this and we're gonna see if we can find anything related to the misfire. I don't know if they're gonna have what we're looking for. These are pretty much all of the data pits that they give us. Again, this is a pretty entry level tool. So we don't have a ton of access to uh, all of the data pits and actuation tests, special functions and stuff like that. Of course, for that stuff, you're gonna have to pay more. Let's back out of this and see if they give us mode six access. A few moments later. All right guys, so I went through the whole app here and unfortunately, uh, the 1000 does not give you access to mode 6 data. Looks like that's not something you're going to find on the Innova 1000. You're going to have to have something like the 5210 or the 5610. For the money, it does a lot, but if you want more functions, you're just going to have to pay a little bit more. Now, typically not having mode 6 or misfire counters is not all that big of a deal when you're trying to find out what cylinder it is that's misfiring. But in our case, it's a little bit more difficult and I'll show you guys why. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood. All right, so under the hood, we have a 1.4 liter Ecotec four-cylinder engine. Now, for those of you that are familiar with this engine in particular, the Ecotecs do not have separate ignition coils for each cylinder. They actually have just one single block that consists of all four ignition coils. So if we pull this cover off, you can see that we don't have a way of disconnecting each individual cylinder. That also means that if one of these ignition coils on this ignition coil block is bad, you're gonna be replacing the whole thing anyway. Now, even though most of the time when you have an ignition misfire on an engine like this, where you're just gonna be replacing the whole ignition coil assembly anyway, there are a few ways that we can test this. Like I mentioned before, with the mode six data, we can tell whether or not uh, our misfire is a single cylinder misfire or if it's a misfire on multiple cylinders. The other thing that we can do is pull the ignition coil assembly out and use a spark tester. That's gonna be like the final test that you're gonna wanna do if you're suspecting it's a bad ignition coil. But like I said, mode six data would definitely be helpful right now. All right guys, so fast forward, uh, I just went ahead and hooked up my Innova 5610. This is gonna be the one that if you guys are serious about diagnosing these systems and you're not just looking to read and clear codes, spending a little bit more money for something like this is definitely gonna be worth it. Again, you can see we have our codes here but i'm going to go into the obd2 menu and we're going to see if we can find access to mode six and it looks like we found it right here obd monitor test mode six let's hit enter all right so now that we're inside the menu let's go ahead and scroll down until we find our misfire counters okay so right here we have all of our misfire data cylinders one two three and four let's start out by checking number one so we're going to scroll down and look for our value our test value is zero so we got no misfire showing there let's go down to our cylinder number two scroll down to our test value and again we're showing here test value of zero by the way guys the engine is not running right now the mode six data is trip information from the last trip so basically what we're doing is we're reading how many misfires happened in each cylinder the last time that the engine was running so we're going to back out and we're going to go down to cylinder number three we're going to scroll down to our test value our test value is zero so we didn't have any misfires on cylinder number three let's back out now let's go down to cylinder number four and take a look at our test value and check it out guys we got 95 counts on that cylinder number four and that tells us that our culprit here is cylinder number four so let's move back under the hood and we'll remove that ignition coil all right so back under the hood we're going to go ahead and remove this ignition coil by removing these two uh, T30 bolts. So we're just going to take our Milwaukee Insider with the T30 uh, Torx bit on the end of it and bust these off. Now we can just grab it and pull up on the coil. There's our ignition coil assembly. Again, all four coils are included in this one big giant coil pack. So technically these do work like individual ignition coils. They're just made together so that you have to replace this whole coil pack all at once. So the first thing I like to do is take a look down into the spark plug holes and we wanna make sure that we don't have oil getting into these holes. All of these holes look really clean. So we're not worried about the uh, valve cover gasket leaking oil down in here. The other thing we wanna take a look at is the condition of these boots. These coil boots can oftentimes be a problem when it comes to secondary ignition misfires. So we got to make sure that the condition of all of these boots are good. Now these three, they look pretty good, but take a look at our cylinder number four. It's pretty obvious that it looks like somebody's been in here because we have silicone going around this boot. Looks like they tried to seal this boot off. I mean, if they did, they didn't do a very good job. Let's see here. You guys see that silicone going around this boot? Yeah, somebody already attempted to repair this thing. I did not expect that to happen. All right, guys, so I tugged on this uh, boot a little bit so I can take a look inside. And just like that, the plastic snapped right off. That must have already been broken and they tried to glue it back together. Yeah, you guys see this thing is cooked. See, I can take these and bend them 
without a problem. Just bending the boot is not going to break the ignition coil. So yeah, there we have it. That's our problem. We got a bad ignition coil. Now to give you guys a little bit more of my thought process and why I went straight for the ignition coil after seeing the mode six data. Again, when we looked at the mode six data, it showed that our cylinder number four was the one that was misfiring. We didn't have misfires in any of the other cylinders. Whenever you have a misfire that's only on one cylinder specifically, you can generally narrow it down to either an issue with a spark plug, ignition coil, or a fuel injector, or even compression on just that one cylinder. Now, if you got misfires all across the board on multiple cylinders, that can oftentimes mean different things. You could either have issues with like bad fuel, bad timing, other things like that. Van a salir en el video? <laughs> anyway, like I said, just giving you guys a little bit of an idea about my thought process and why it was that we went straight for the coil. But again, mode six data was key to help us out here to make our diagnostic way more efficient. So I'm gonna let the shop know to go ahead and order an, an ignition, an ign 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 ignition, ignition, ignition coil. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the shop know to order an ignition coil so that they can get this thing fixed. That's gonna be the fix. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. Well guys, there you have it. Another fix for the books. Now as usual, if you're interested in picking up one of these two, make sure you check the link down below. Again, we got the 5610 from Anova and we have the 1000. The 1000, I highly recommend it. If you're just a DIY and you're just looking to read codes, get some information on your vehicle, Really, really good tool to have. If you're looking to get deeper into diagnostics and doing more troubleshooting, I would highly recommend picking up something like the 5610. It's gonna give you a lot more options, a lot more things you can do. Of course, you're gonna spend a little bit more money, but it all comes down to what you're looking for in a tool and what your capabilities are as far as troubleshooting. That's what I'm here for. I'm gonna try to share as much knowledge as I can with you guys to help you troubleshoot whatever it is you're working on. Anyways, like I always say, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you found it informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.